All right, hello everyone. This is Marcus Holmes with the Blended Family Playbook. Yes, this is coming to you at a special time, but I wanna let you know, it's because it's a special reason. I have Alexandra Iden on the program today. And the reason why is children, as most of you know, for me and my wife, they are so important to us, the future, right? And leveraging great leadership practices is something that I've always wanted to figure out how to do. And one day, um, and Alexandra, I'm just going to tell you, your marketing was great because you found me on Instagram and I was hooked. So guys, we're going to be touching on the Big Life Journal. This is right now Major's Leadership Bible. We are teaching him growth mindset principles. If you've never heard of that, you're about to. And then I went on a buying spree. I bought every pre piece of material that Alexandra and her team had. I mean, I have a I have a notebook. I think it's it's about and I had it tabbed out. I mean, Alexandra, I'm so excited. This this me and my wife is excited. We're yeah. teaching growth mindset principles. We're on principle number one right now, which is how do you change the world? And Major actually wants to um, feed the homeless. He, he that's how he wants to start out impacting the world. So, Alexandra, this is going to be good, guys. So here's the thing. Here's what I need you to do. Share this and share this often as well. Alexandra has a free gift. Big Life Journal has a free gift. You can get to that gift by typing Big Life in the comment section in the comment section on Facebook. All right. So just remember that. Type Big Life. It's going to take you right into where you can join, start following Alexandra in the Big Life Journal. And um, this is going to be a good episode. So again, I'm going to say it again. Sharing is caring. If you care about your kids, also not just kids, but teenagers, she has a journal for teenagers. You want to share this with those parents that have either great kids and those parents that are, are maybe struggling with their child in some area. This is going to, I think, totally reshape um, children's lives. That's why I have Alexandra on. That's why I'm going into work a little later, because I thought it was this important. And this was the only time this amazing woman with all she has going on could meet. So we make it happen when it's important things like this. Alexandra, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. I am so excited to have you on as well. Give us a little background. Now, of course, I've read on you. I'm following you on social media. Um, we are big proponents and believers of the system, the program. But just give us a little background on yourself, your family, and the mission. Where did this happen? How did this, this come about? Sure. So um, Big Life Journal, that's the name of our company, um, was born only last year. Believe it or not, it's a very, very young company. Wow. Uh, and we've seen so much growth, a tremendous exponential. And I think that's the, um, you know, that's the indication that there is a need and there is a uh, demand for something like, you know, for things that we do. Um, so in 2016, my my husband, which is my second co-founder, and I, uh, we were expecting our first child, Michael, and we sat down together and um, had a conversation. How do we want to raise our children? What kind of mindset, what kind of qualities, what kind of values do we want to instill in our children? And um, at that moment, I also discovered the book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, if you've read it. Um, it is pretty transformational. It was written in 2006, so it's over 10 years old. Um, but recently, it got a lot of bit, it, it became popular again um, with all the additional research and you know more and more organizations um, getting interested in growth mindset. Not even school, not only schools, but also like big companies are interested in this. Um, so I discovered this book, I read the book, and it was the point for me where I realized that this is it. <laughs> you know, the growth mindset, the power of your mind, and teaching your child that is the most important gift you can give them. Um, and even like your own journey from, you know, to from fixed to growth mindset, that's the very important piece. And your child will be watching you, watching your journey and learning from you. Um, 
if you want to, we can we can just explain what growth mindset is. Do you know everyone? Alexander, that's the point. I want when people are looking at this years from now to be able to understand the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset. So, yes, please go ahead and go into that. OK, so as I mentioned, um, Carol Dweck, I don't usually I have a book on my table. I don't have it right now. I was going to show you. But um, her, she wrote the book Mindset and uh, she's a Stanford psychologist and she has done years and decades of research in this. And she studied a lot of children, a lot of adults, and um, her research is just transformational. She writes a lot about it in the book, but she also has, you know, a lot of uh, TED Talks and you can look her up. Her name is Carol Dweck. Uh, so when she coined a growth mindset, um, uh, there are actually two mindsets that she talks about, the fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And um, what she said was, you know, the growth mindset is the belief that you can always improve and you can, um, you're not fixed in your abilities and you're not fixed in your talents, you're not fixed in your skills and you can get better with effort, with practice, with, you know, getting help from others. Um, you can always improve. You are not born a certain way. Um, and fixed mindset, which is the opposite, is, you know, saying something, well, I'm just not good at math, you know, or I'm just not a good cook. Uh, I just can't do this, you know. So statements like this that we hear all the time <laughs> are fixed mindset statements. And our children hear us saying that and that becomes their self-talk. So, you know, those those kind of statements, when you talk about you being fixed, right, in, in your talents and your abilities and your qualities, um, that's the fixed mindset conversation. So those are very drastic different, you know, there's a very drastic difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And she has done enormous amount of research about the benefits of having a growth mindset. Outstanding. So I think I, I, I can't let this go, Alexandra, to all the entrepreneurs out there, the people looking at starting a business and they're saying, you know what? I can't do it. It's too late in life. I don't know what my mission is. This program is for you. Um, <laughs> you just started last year and I know that there has to be exponential growth because I'm always on the site looking up new materials. I see your blog posts. Um, so just to let you guys know, if you if you subscribe to Big Life Journal, every Friday, Alexandra and her team are releasing new materials that are at no cost to you. She's giving you so much value at no cost. Just think when you spend a few dollars on that journal and the materials, what you'll have in your possession. I will tell you, it's transformational for me. As you can tell, the excitement in my voice um, is out there because again, I know about mindset from an adult perspective, but I had always wanted to know, how do I really start transforming this into bite-sized chunks for the little people? And Alexandra did it. So I'm letting you know, last year she started this company and is experiencing phenomenal growth. So to you entrepreneur, if you have a belief in something, a passion for it, and there's a component that is meant to add value to people's lives, it's going to work. You just have to keep pushing. So Alexandra, first, kudos to you and your husband. Secondly, um, I appreciate you sharing your story and your background, right? Um, most people want to say that they came up with this idea from scratch. I, I appreciate your candor and you stating, you know what? It was that book Mindset um, by Carol Dweck. Um, I'm going to buy it. I am going to buy it um, today on Amazon. I just want to say thank you for that. Now, now here, here's let's let's get into it now. OK, so tell us a little bit more about the experience. What have you seen? Have you have you used I call these the Jedi mind tricks of, of, of instilling growth. And they're really basic principles that you're applying, but you're doing it in, I think, such a sensational way where not only adults, but children. So tell us about that. How, I, I just, the materials, where did you, I mean, what's your background? Is it in clinical psychology, child development? I mean, you have, it is so much material out there that I have access to every day. Guys, I want y'all to see how thick this uh, this manual is. It's, it's thick. Here, let me put it in front of the camera. These are all the materials, all the lessons I have that me and Major are gonna go through 
over the next year, me and his mother. So go ahead, tell us a little bit about that, Alexandra. Uh-oh, we got a little stuck there. I'm just letting you know, once Alexandra comes back in, we're gonna go ahead and keep this going. I know that's the thing with technology, it's a beautiful thing, um, it gets you. But I'm letting you know, if you are a parent, and you are interested in, well, how do I talk to my child from a growth mindset perspective? There are things in here, there's materials for you. There's materials on how do I compliment my child from a standpoint of um, wanting to instill that growth mindset? Because a lot of times we don't know how we're talking to our children is actually creating a fixed mindset. So this is where we have to come in as the parents and really instill those values, but we can't do that until we've changed. Is that correct? You understand where I'm going? So here, Alexandra, we're gonna bring her back in soon as those technical difficulties are resolved. Until then, I want you to understand something. Sharing is caring, share this broadcast. Our children are the future, we need them. So guess what? You have a tool. And we are bringing Alexandra right back in. She's coming right now. So, hey, Alexandra, no worries. It happens, right? This is technology. I was seeing you the entire time. I was like, why am I not being yeah, seen? It was, it was with the glitches of technology. I know. I just had to stop and start it again. Um, mm -hmm. So now I know what to do. But anyway, so to answer your question, um, I was hearing you the entire time. So I know what you were talking about <laughs> um, is, you know, those principles are very simple. You don't need to have a degree in psychology to teach your child a growth mindset. And that's the beauty of it. Um, mm -hmm. Children, based on our experience, grasp it very fast. I mean, like, right, like that. Once you start talking with them in a growth mindset language, and once you start kind of like um, doing the very simple things and conversations and, you know, dinner table after school, you will see the impact right away. You will see how they start talking about the failures, the mistakes, and you know their abilities. Like you will be amazed, I'm telling you. Um, so for example, I'll give you a very practical tip. You know, um, growth mindset um, is the belief that you can always improve and you, you know that, that you, um, if you can't do something, you can't do something yet. And the yet is the key word and teach your child that word and and have it as a poster in your house and write it out so they can see that word yet and they um, understand it and they grasp it very well. So, for example, if your child starts saying something like, well, I just can't do this, like I can't and, and immediately you can't do this yet. <laughs> and um, let's have a conversation with you. Like, what can we do? What can we learn to get better? What can we do to, you know, to learn this, to start doing this? Mm -hmm. And that power of yet, um, you will you will hear it over and over again. Like, we had a very funny story. Somebody um, mentioned in our Facebook group, and what, you know, a mother taught her this power of yet to her children. And then uh, they were sitting at the dinner table, and they were not making any mess. And she complimented them on this, and they were said, Mom, we haven't made any mess yet. There <laughs> so, <you go. laughs> they will grasp it. They will talk to you back like this. So, um, you know, so the power yet is is a very practical tip. Um, another, t you don't you don't need to have a degree in do, you know to do this. Um, another one is we found works very well is the praise. And that's what Carol Dweck also talks about a lot. How you praise your child is very important. Um, and she has done a lot of research around this. And I'll give you uh, one of the example of her research. Okay. Um, so she had a classroom and she, and she split the, class, the kids into two groups. And she gave everyone a puzzle. So everybody was solving a puzzle. And once they solved the puzzle, they brought it to the instructor and instructor would give out two types of praises. So one group received a fixed mindset praise, which was, hey, you completed a puzzle. You must be so smart. And the second group received a growth mindset praise, which was, hey, you completed a puzzle. You must have worked really hard. So the first one, praising for the smartness, and the second one is praising for the effort. So then they, you know, kids sat down and everyone, um, and the instructor said, okay, guys, I have a much more difficult puzzle or same difficulty. So which one do you want? 
And what they've seen is just a tremendous, it's just unbelievable. The kids who were praised for being smart all chose the same difficulty. And the kids who, who were praised for uh, effort all chose the, the difficult puzzle. So that shows you that you know when kids are praised for being smart, um, they uh, get this message of being smart as a fixed trait, and they don't want to lose that. So what goes on in their head is, well, you know, I just made, the, I just did this puzzle, and instructor told me, teacher told me I was smart. If I'm not going to do this puzzle, the second one, she's going to think that I'm not going to, I'm not smart anymore. So mm -hmm. that kind of what's going on in their head, they don't want to lose that you know, label that you gave them of being smart. Whereas the kids that just work, you know, you praise them, you said, you must have worked hard and you can work hard next time again, right? So that's just a very subtle difference that makes a huge difference. And research shows, you know, just unbelievable results. That, you know, so, um, you know, Tim, oh my goodness, uh, from the four hour hour, he, uh, a few years back, I listened to one of his blogs, and what he had said was something that I totally changed in the rearing of my son. And my wife knows this. I don't tell my son, like you said, oh, you're so smart, major, you know, and, and really kind of inflate things beyond what the reality is. He said that his parents raised him to say, he, they would always tell him, hey, Tim, you worked hard. Hey, Tim, keep working hard. That That's good keep working hard. And so I have a mindset and you see it in major, very competitive. Um, and, and we're trying to, we've been, and I just, and your, your, your tool, your platform really substantiated what me and my wife have been doing for a while. And that is we've been taking those nuggets from what we hear out there sometimes on blogs or when we're at Sunday school or at church. And um, it's that growth mindset. So like you said, it's the praising for the effort. Parents, stop praising your children on how smart they are. Praise them on the effort and you will see them continue to excel in wanting to do harder things. That's a great point. That's a great nugget. Taria, if you got that, please make sure we get that as a quote. Alexandra, what I always do with all of my guests, when there is one of those golden nuggets, we'll make a quote out of it. And of course, you're going to get the credit. We're going to put that on social media. But okay. that's a big one. That's a big one. Man, that's a big one. Um, tell us, as far as parents, I, I absolutely enjoy the materials there. So what I did as uh, with my son's classes, I issued a challenge. The kids were to challenge their parents to doing something from a growth mindset perspective over the weekend. So when they get back on Wednesday, they're going to, or oh, really next fr this upcoming Friday, they're going to let me know how that challenge went over this past weekend. So um, tell us, tell us about it. Where, where are these, where is this mission taking you? I mean, um, phenomenal growth. Where is it taking you? Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned, we just one year old, a little bit over and we are just blown away. <laughs> um, I mean, in the beginning it was just me and now we have, uh, seven people on the team so it's definitely um you know we are just moving with a very high speed what was interesting to us is when we my husband and i had an idea for the journal and it was really is just a tool to teach your children growth mindset right so um when we had an idea for the journal we thought it would be perfect for families so let's say like a parent and a child sit down together and do in journal together and there's a concept of a journal buddy which is very important because that's how you connect and that's how you have important discussions right um so what we didn't expect it is was the the schools and the teachers <laughs> got so excited about this journal and now um we see this you know schools buying hundreds at a time for their students and it's just you know blowing our minds and um um i think that's where um and we'd release the lesson plans and the teacher's guide because we realized very quickly we need to provide additional support for teachers in the classrooms um so and that's, I think, where we will see a lot of impact, you know, teachers introducing them in schools and using our resources in the classrooms. Um, and then now we're actually doing a very cool thing, uh, which is our journal is 
worldwide. I mean, like we just spread around the world. And Australia is a is is Australians for some reason are taking it, um, you know, very positively. And that's how we're. It's a very big market for us. So in Australia, we're doing a study uh, of over two six hundred students where we're testing them before and after. <laughs> So we're testing their mindset and how they view their life, the, the, themselves and their abilities. So before we introduce the resources that we produce and after. And now we're doing the study and we're seeing very positive results already initially. And that's what gets us excited because we're going to have this as a proof that it actually works. And like I said, it is not something that my husband and I came up uh, by sitting on the couch. It is a science-based theory and concept. Another thing which we have to say is that um, besides growth mindset, there are all other things that we also introduce in, um, in our resources, such as you know, positive self-talk and the importance of believing in yourself and the importance of gratitude, you know, all these different things like trying to incorporate from you know different perspectives in raising a whole child and a whole mind. Um, so growth mindset is a key component, but there are a lot of other things that we introduce in, like you know, the the resilience and and making a difference and dreaming big, right? So all these different things um, that are in there and. Um, what also works for us very well is receiving feedback from our um, users and customers. And that's how we develop the future resources. You, you mentioned we have a lot on our website, which is true. We produce like every month. But um, it all comes from the need and from our us reaching out to parents and teachers and saying, you know, what are the, the problems you're facing? What are kids are struggling with? Um, very common answer is the fear of failure. Uh, kids are afraid to fail. They are um, they're afraid to try new things, difficult things. They're afraid to fail. So we produced enormous amount of resources to help with that. So that's how we kind of that's how we thought process. Oh man, I I, I love it. Um, so I would assume, Alexandra, you have you been on CNN Today Show? I mean, <laughs> at some point, I know that's coming, right? Um, if it hasn't already, share with us what's going on right now in the world of Big Life Journal and. I know Australia is a huge market. I see the little feed when people are buying. I'm seeing people from all over the world. When you go to the website and you can see yeah. who's purchased something. So I know it's spreading like wildfire. What's going on in Big Life Journal? What's next? Um, and, and, and you know, how about that? How about we'll discuss that. But why don't we go through what you have in the materials, you know, the for children and teenagers and why you decided that you needed to create two different versions. Yeah, so uh, the first version was developed last year and both times we had Kickstarters. Um, before we even like made the product final, we wanted to make sure that people are interested. So the first Kickstarter uh, and the second Kickstarter just finished last uh, couple weeks, so two weeks ago, we were over 1000% funded. Uh, unbelievable. But um, so the first journal, which we developed is for kids. And that was the, the original idea, the original journal. And um, when we were working on the journal, we consulted tons of parents and teachers and made sure, you know, the school psychologists, and we made sure that there's a lot of input, in, input from professionals. Um, and since we released the first journal, the number one request we received daily was to create something for teens. Mm. I never envisioned creating a teen journal. I never did, and um, I didn't. I didn't think we're going to go into that age group because it's very difficult. <laughs> um, teens are much more difficult than children. A lot of you know. So, um, you know, for me, it was a huge challenge. How can we create a journal for teens that would, you know, get them excited and interested, where they have computer games, phones, you know, social media in front of them, for them to put this down, start working on the journal. I mean, that's a huge task. And somebody actually who worked with teens told me once, he said, well, there's a reason it doesn't exist <laughs> because nobody wants to take on this challenge. <laughs> Ooh, so, that's a big one. It's a big one. I have a 25 year old, so I know those teen years. Yes, it's not easy. Right. It is not. So what we did was we took a year. I mean, like this journal was we took a year to develop it. And we had so many prototypes. We had so many prototypes in design. We had we had like, you know, multiple designers producing different designs. We're showing them to teens and saying, hey, which one do you like? And then, um, you know, giving feedback immediately from teenagers and asking them, like, what kind of journal would you want to use? And the number one and I'll show you um, the cover so that you when you go to the website, that's the teen journal. 
And the number one, uh, well, one of the most common answers were, well, I don't want to write a lot. I just want to check boxes. You know, I just want to circle things. <laughs> and that's what we did. <laughs> we literally just sat down with the teens and I said, what do you want? What would you use? Because that was the number one uh, criteria for us, right? So something that not the teachers, not the parents, you, what would you use, right? So, um, and that's how we develop, developed the team journal and it's just outstanding. The graphics are outstanding. Um, and, you know, we included stories from real life entrepreneurs. What we did is we went to Forbes 30 under 30. We found all, all around the world, we found people who are making a difference who are young, you know, in their kind of 20s. Wow. And they included the stories because that's what they can relate. Um, you know, not necessarily maybe Thomas Edison who already, you know, past so um the stories that they can relate they can look these people up on social media they can start following them right so get them excited um and i think that kind of that kind of process is what's important like you know working with kids working with teens and and seeing what they want and what they need well, yeah you know i think this is so i'm 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 bringing you on to touch on growth mindset and even in your business i'm seeing alexandra you have a growth mindset, even in your business model, because I, and I, cause I do a lot of business consulting. You've done so much in terms of customer feedback, wanting it, you know, almost being insatiable about getting it, the amount of research, how you gathered it. You can't have a successful business. If after you've made the sale, you don't have that engagement, but on the front end, you've done so much. And I, I love hearing that. So, I'm going to be marketing this particular video to potential entrepreneurs and those that are in the business. This is how you do it. You do the research, guys. You do the work. You have the growth mindset that says, you know what? We don't have it yet, but we're going to get it and we're going to keep finding it. And how many how many um, how many versions did you did you end up having before you got to the final one? How many was it? We did. We uh, we had a lot of prototypes, but we went small. So let's say the journal is 160 pages, and we created you know um, 10 pages at first, and then we showed them to the teens, and they're like, "No, I don't like this. It's too childish. I'm not interested." You know, next. <laughs> so um, and that's how we kind of started. And once we established the design and the approach, and we, it just went very fast from there um, because we didn't have to like validate every single page with them, right? We just needed to understand what would they find interesting and engaging. Um, and, you know, this is a very difficult market and that's how we approached it. Maybe for some other markets, it's not as difficult, right? But we just were extra cautious because we knew that teens are difficult <laughs> and we have to approach it this way. We need to create something they will like. I, I, I'm just going to say this, and I mean, I, I we work with kids. Um, my wife is a music teacher. She owns a music school. Um, at one point in the past, I was a youth pastor, but I still do a lot with children. I don't know if I've seen anything this comprehensive that hits it, that, that strikes a chord um, with, I think, parents and um, kids, parents and that teenager. And I just have to say again, kudos to you because um, – I'm big on leadership. And Alexandra, I think you guys have hit the gold mine um, as noted by the fact that I think you've cornered the market. I mean, and like you said, a very crowded market, you've carved out a really nice tight niche and your following I see is just growing exponentially. Thank you. I'm so appreciative. And I think that, you know, um, I, I feel like my husband and I are personal development junkies, you know, Tim Ferriss, all this be like very like-minded, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's what the perspective that we came with. And we, like you said, you know, exactly. We knew that we want to raise our children that way and looked around. There's nothing very, you know, available, which, which is child friendly. <laughs> right. um, so we said, okay, well, let's just make it because at this point I have a child, <laughs> I have an immediate need. I'm not going to wait for anyone to create this. And this is how it all started. Wow. Yeah. I think again, this is what's so cool. You saw a need. And you said, you know what, I'm not, I don't have a PhD. I don't have two degrees in child psychology and development. You just said, I saw a need. I'm a mother. Your husband's a father. And you know what? I'm not seeing what I want. So you created it. Yeah. That right there is just, that's growth mindset, guys, 101. So this is why I'm really enjoying this um, conversation. 
And next time, I need to have your husband on here too. I want to <laughs> interview the both of you. All right, because I want to, I think people sometimes want to understand the history, the, the, the nuances that you guys went through, the frustration, because there are so many entrepreneurs out there that are sometimes saying, okay, how, how did they do this? I mean, so that right there is growth mindset training. Um, yeah. And to go from one to seven employees this quickly, it shows that, again, you're doing it the right way, but you're managing the growth. Um, Alexandra, this has been good. I mean, I know it's only 904. I got a whole lot more questions to talk about. So um, can I mention ahead. one thing? Um, because, you know, we're talking about the success. I want to mention a failure. <laughs> I think it's going to be very important. And actually, that's kind of that, that I love mentioning this failure. So once uh, when we my husband and I in 2016, when we had an idea for the journal, and like I said, we did a Kickstarter campaign, and that I was on nine months pregnant. And at that point, like our Kickstarter campaign was my last month of pregnancy. So you can imagine there's a lot going on. Um, and that campaign didn't go well. So we were um, we had a prototype for the journal and that's where we kind of started. And I think we were, I don't know, raised, um, uh, maybe 40% of what we needed. And, um, you know, and then, uh, something, and, and, and then of course there's like two choices you can give up and you can say, okay, well, no one is interested <laughs> or you can kind of learn from this and say, okay, well, you know, what have we done wrong so that, you know, it didn't succeed this time? What can we change? And that's the, the process that we went through. Louis sat down and said, well, you know what? We looked at the backers of our Kickstarter campaign and said, okay, they're friends and family. Yeah. But there are also other people who we don't know. And they backed our campaign. And that's what gave us fuel to keep going. Because if a stranger, you know, you don't even have a product and that's the nature of Kickstarter, right? You have an idea and maybe you have a prototype, but you don't even have a product. And if it's a stranger backs your idea by giving them your their money, there is a, there is a, you know, value and there is indication that it will work and there's just, you just need to adjust it. And that's what we did. You know, the second time, you know, we took a couple more months, we kind of learned from our mistakes of having the running the first Kickstarter campaign ever. And uh, there's a, a whole new science of running, you know, running Kickstarters. <laughs> so we learned more about Kickstarters, how it works and how crowdfunding works. And then the second time we launched the same journal, you know, a you know, more, a little bit more polished and we were 300% funded. And that's what, how kind of propelled us to success. And then less like, like I mentioned, our third Kickstarter was only a couple of weeks ago and we were over a thousand percent funded. So, you know, from 40% to 300 to a thousand. So, and it's, it's just indication that, you know, the, there is the failure is a big part of a growth mindset. <laughs> wow. And this is the example that you can teach your children. I'm, I'm writing this down. First Kickstarter, 40% funded. Second Kickstarter, 300% funded. Third Kickstarter. This is huge. 1,000% funded. That's huge. The, the, see, Alexander, this is growth mindset. And I love the fact that you're, you were, and here's a growth mindset person that, I, that I've learned because, you know, I love talking about my failures. People that are in the growth mindset love talking about their fa failures because they were points of learning. They were, you know, like John Maxwell, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. You don't ever lose. And I love the fact that you guys learn, you altered, you measured it, retooled second time, 300 percent. I mean, third time, a thousand percent. That right there is a lesson in and of itself. So again, kudos to you guys. You're doing some incredible things. Um, uh, let, let's let's uh, let's and, and anytime you want to interject something, please yeah. do. Um, I want to ask you about this. How do you help parents, and how have you seen this help parents? Because I was listening to um, one day I was on vacation and I saw some come across uh, while I was up in Dallas with my parents. Um, Megan Kelly. Uh, uh, the Today Show of NBC had a program on lawnmower parenting. Mm -hmm. and how you have now, it's not helicopter parents, you have lawnmower parents. And what it, what it means is you have parents now 
where they mow down any obstacles for their child. So their child experiences no failures at all. And Big Life Journal is the antithesis of that. Yeah. And so how do you deal with parents that are initially skeptical of your material? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but you know. So I think that um, just to comment on what you just said, my, my husband and I are strong believers of failures. And if you look at that, when we go to the playground and you will see our boy with other children, my husband and I always stuck, stepping back. We're looking from afar and just watching him fall <laughs> and getting hit. And, and of course, like there's something we need to check. But and then you can see other parents just hovering over their children. No, don't go there. Don't go. This is too dangerous. And, and this is the, uh, there's a, a concept of, which is cuddling of America. And I think this is what happens to our kids. We're cuddling them too much and we're not preparing them for life. And this is uh, a disservice you do for your child. Unfortunately, I know the intentions and I'm mother and I feel for my child every time there's something happens to him. But for the best thing I can do for him is to make him strong, to face the challenges in life. Because the ch once he gets out of your house, <laughs> Once he's facing the real world, <laughs> right? So you need to prepare him for all sorts of people, all sorts of situations, right? And coach him through the challenges. And in our Facebook group, which is over 60,000 people at this point, private Facebook group, uh, we have a lot of discussions and there are a lot of questions about things like bullying. And uh, parents are concerned and then like, how can I teach my child from a growth mindset perspective to uh, you know, face bullies? And um, what we try to always explain is that, um, you stepping in as a parent and you protecting your child doesn't do them um, as much good as you coaching them through to respond and to you know to build the self esteem to build the the how they present themselves and what they do in the situations like that so that they can do it themselves and that's also it, it's just real life example I'm sure for each parent hearing about their child being bullied is just traumatizing like you don't you just want to run and save and you know punch the kid but what you know what you could do instead is to have that conversation with your kid and it, first of all you can explain that this is not about you this is not about you this is about this child you know that's and then you can coach them through you know and 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 how to face that what to say what to do how to stand tall and like a superman right so like all these different like things that you can do for your kids it, this is very important this is the the role of a parent to prepare for life you know to make them strong to like to have them face all of this themselves with your coaching right with your help and um i think that's the, that's what we believe in i you're you're spot on um i think we're and and i use the term i heard this um i don't know where it came from over the last year or two we can't continue to raise snowflakes right where you know we have these snowflake children where they're literally soon as some heat soon as some pressure comes they melt and they wilt and we're like you said, we're raising a society of children who like we coddle them too much. Um, it's hard. I, and I get it. I've been there. I've, I've sometimes, um, you know, me and my wife major, he's at the playground or he's in a game and, you know, he, he falls or he, he gets hit. And the first thing he does is he looks up to see if we're looking and you know how it goes. Then yeah. that's where the tears come. So I'm like, I say, Chris, turn away. You know, turn away right now, Chris. He's five. Tell she's like, babe, that's our that's my baby. And I'm like, no, turn away right now. So yeah. there has to be a balance, right? Because um yeah. sometimes, you know, he probably is a little hurt. And I'm like, no, babe, we gotta raise him to be that, you know, a strong young man. But yeah, we, people and, parents know, right? There's right. that and I just want to mention, like, in your response, first of all, the child should understand it's okay to cry. Like, it, it can hurt, right? So uh, for you, you can listen, you, you can emphasize, and that's the role of your parent, right? So as a parent, you have the conversation, what happened? Tell me, tell me. So, and they need to process, you know, the, the event, right? So if something happened, they fell, they got into a fight. Um, and then it's okay to cry, please cry, because you want the emotions to come out and strong people cry all the time. So never, you know, 
never ask them to hold it and you know you're strong don't cry you know we against that <laughs> so let them the, the emotions out and let them express themselves and then you just and once it is it's through you know once they feel a little bit calmer then you have a conversation and the coaching and like okay well let's brainstorm you know this is the issue what are the solutions what are we going to try right like go through that process alexandra you're helping me because <laughs> I tend to I tend to sometimes do the exact opposite when I'm because I got to do better. See, this is this is a very transparent conversation. People know that from from this particular broadcast, I'm very transparent. So that's something that my wife is constantly like making sure. And that's why I appreciate her giving me that balance, because I'm like earlier this week, this weekend, you had a baseball game and major. He hit a good he. He did real well, but there were a couple of times he struck out and he was walking back to the dugout and you could see those tears forming because he's very competitive. He doesn't want to fail. And I had to say, Major, don't you dare cry, son. You did good. So I'm giving him almost two mixed stories. Don't cry. No, let him cry. And then let's talk about it. Yeah. And so Alexandra, it's good to hear that. My wife is probably, I know she's she's somewhere here in the house probably saying, yeah, I told you. I told you somebody. You have to, you have to hear from Alexandra Big Life to, to really start listening. Yeah. You know, but yes. Yeah, yeah we, are, we are very big on this because again, there's it's, it's so much research behind of this. You know, letting the emotions out, it's a step number one. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 men cry boys cry and that's just it's just a release right it's a release and you got to release it and then once you release it and then you start talking and that is some really those are some good nuggets we have to let our children cry and and here's where men and and mom sometimes can do with boys because i know men we're taught to be rough and tough and no you don't cry when i know i'm the first one you know i'm going to a movie you know, I'm, 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 you know, sniffling and crying and, you know, wiping my eyes. So I, I make sure um, that I always try to stay in touch with my emotions. I need to make sure that I translate that over to my son because I think he's the same way. And I get it from my dad, you know, we'll cry in a second, but I think moreover, more overtly men in our society are taught to keep that inside. And that's not a good thing. So I'm really glad that you, you brought that up and brought it to the surface. Parents, teach your kids, especially those boys, that it's okay to cry. Don't shut that down, let that emotion out. It's healthy, it's therapeutic, it's cathartic. I love doing it. Um, my wife knows I'll cry in a heartbeat over something, something so simple, and I need to make sure that my son is doing it even when he's frustrated. And I'm encouraging him not to cry because I'm trying to encourage him that's counterproductive. It's almost counterintuitive. So thank you. What, well, Alexandra, I, I declare, do we need to give you an honorary doctorate in children's psychology? I mean, what is it? Oh, my, oh, my wife is clapping. She's, she's upstairs uh, clapping right now, Alexandra. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, I hear you. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to take you back down. Uh-oh, hold on, Alexandra. I'm bringing you back in. I'm bringing you back in. I'm bringing you back in. Okay, oh, hold on. All right, you there? Okay, go ahead and restart, Alexandra, when you're ready. And I'll bring you back in. <laughs> so guys, I'm letting you know this has been a great, great session. We're bringing Alexandra back in, um, touching on growth mindset. Hey, Alexandra, I'm sure same thing happened. You saw yeah. me. My, my, if you didn't hear my wife clapping. I she, heard, it. <laughs> heard it. Yeah, she Thank was clapping. <laughs> and, and that's what you need, right? That's what's so important, the accountability. I'm letting big life, I'm me and Crystal are Major's buddy for his journal. But let me know, I'll let you know, the school, Major Spanish immersion class, they were buddying up this mm -hmm. past week. And going to see the excitement and hearing them say, um, you know, the power of yet. I teach on the power of why. Mm -hmm. But man, it's twin is the power of yet. And so I'm just so excited, Alexander, that we have you on the show. You, you know, you and your husband are good people in my book. Anytime you have a new product or solution or anything, you just reach out to me. I will broadcast it to the world. Um, Thank you. Tell Thank us you what, so much. No, I'm excited for you. I, I really, me and my wife, uh, 
I told her, I said, babe, I'm praying for it for Big Life Journal. This needs to be in as many schools as possible, especially those <clears throat> kids who sometimes just their parents are they're going through a lot. They don't realize that from the, the systemic fixed mindset that they that those parents grew up with, they don't even know that they're just killing their kids' dreams. This is why the Big Life Journal I, this needs to be in every child's hand. And it's so easy to, to get through. It's just a really great resource. So um, tell us what's coming up. I mean, um, um, I don't want to mention anything that that um, you shared with me in private. Um, yeah. um, you know, it, just share what you want to share with, with the rest of the world, because we're going to boost this post quite a bit, because I want people to know about it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. Um, so we have a lot going on, as you can imagine. Our next step is to translate the journals and the resources into many languages, including Spanish, French, and other you know languages that people are requesting. Uh, we're going to start a podcast in 2019. Uh, what if you are into goal setting, and if you want to teach your children goal setting, uh, we're releasing a very cool New Year's goal setting kit for kids, and let them learn how to set goals. You know how to uh, reflect on 2018, how to set goals for 2019. Um, so that's going to be in this year. And then, um, you know, podcast translations and anything else that comes our way. Um, so and one thing I want to mention is that we do have free resources. So if you still kind of thinking whether or not it's going to work for you and I'm going to tell you it will work for you. But um, what you can do is you can try and our free weekly resources, which, um, you know, just mentioned recently. And if you sign up to newsletter, you don't have to buy anything. You can just sign up on our website and you will immediately receive a you know, growth mindset guide for parents, which is one page. Um, and then you will get every single week a free poster or a free worksheet of free printable. And another thing, um, and you can start using with, with an article behind it, some kind of instructions how to use. And um, another important point is that if you're on Facebook, we have a very awesome Facebook group for parents and teachers. It's called Raising Kids with a Growth Mindset. It grew from zero to 60,000 in one year. And um, it is, uh, you know, we have a person dedicated to making sure that the group is respectful, supportive, all questions unanswered. We have moderators in the group who are parenting coaches, therapists, to answer, to make sure the questions are answered. So, um, we have Facebook lives inviting parenting experts, authors of the books. You know, you can ask your questions to a parenting expert, and that's going on every week. So, highly recommend all free and it's a free parenting training. <laughs> and um, you know, once you have those free resources and you have the opportunity to ask your questions, you know, you're you basic basically on a good path. And the last thing I want to mention is about your own mindset, and that's the key. Like one, you. Your mind, your mindset, your work on yourself, your personal development is the most important thing because your child will watch you grow and they will learn from you, from your self-talk, from how you talk about yourself, how you talk about them, how you talk about the world. And that's what's important. And, um, you know, we all have fixed mindset in one way or another, like in one areas or another. Maybe it's about, you know, sports or about your uh, cooking abilities, your math abilities, you know, whatever. All of us have fixed mindset and you will never reach that perfect being of being 100% growth mindset. And that's what Carol Dweck talks about a lot. She says, you know, a person is a combination of growth mindset, fixed mindset. It's your journey to get more from fixed to growth, right? And it's a daily conversation in your head, daily catching your fixed mindset statements. And you can even do it in front of your child. So let's say you just say something about yourself like, oh man, I'm just, I can, just can't cook. Fixed mindset, right? So you said that and you caught yourself and you have the conversation. It's like, oh, hey, what I just said, was it a fixed mindset or growth mindset? What do you think? And your child would, it will correct you pretty fast, you know, and then you will have that conversation saying, okay, well, what, what can I say to make it a growth mindset? What do you think? And get, ask them for advice, you know, have that conversation, be there, see them, you growing, you being on the journey. And that's the most important thing because you being frank about this, you being open about this with the kid will inspire them. And that's what they will remember, not preaching, not, you know, kind of like trying to teach them, but like your conversations and you sharing the failures. Like you said, you love talking about the failures, share failures with them as much as you can. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. You, oh, this is this is good stuff. Uh, uh, my, my social media team, if you just captured that last point, sharing in failures with your children with the growth mindset in 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 context is the best way to teach them, not the harping, not the fussing, but teaching them growth mindset. And it's funny, um, you know, I'm, I'm in this, uh, I'm in a growth mindset um, uh, mastermind, um, Alexandra, and one of the teachers, um, Dr. Sanderstein and Dr. Mick, uh, Nick Mahan, they're talking about always voting your highest choice and teaching people that if you wanna be happy, you have to vote your highest choice. There's always choices out there, but vote the highest choice that is based on love and feeling well and adding value. And so um, you voted your highest choice with this mission. That's what I saw. Um, this, is, this has been, again, a, a great discussion. I, um, are you, where are you gonna be next? I mean, are you gonna be on, I, and I'm being honest when I say this, you have not been on the Today Show yet. <laughs> Um, PBS. Yes, and that, that's an, in, it's of course in our plans. Um, what we see is there's so much interest and we're so excited and we're working to produce more kind of research-based evidence. Like I said, we're doing studies in school, something that we can always mention um, that you know we, we prove that it works. And um, it's our goal is to spread this message and we're so excited to have people like you and others to to back us and to support us even with just with your emotional support and moral support that's enough for us to keep going <laughs> now this is i am going to tell you um if you're not on facebook on the facebook group i'm a part of the facebook group i follow you on all the social media channels if you're not doing that blended family playbook listeners you need to create resource share this broadcast there are some parents and children who need these materials and even if you don't have the money to invest sign up under big life journal and you'll get those free resources those fleet those free blog posts that come out every friday that are awesome and i think you might even do sometimes more than every friday am i right alexander i think yeah, you might Sometimes we do, but our Friday is like a schedule. We we no, rate or shine, and sometimes you know when we are late by an hour, we get messages and emails saying, "Where is my email?" Yeah, <laughs> That's what you want from your community, right? To get you to got get, a great tribe. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you do. Um, it is approaching ten thirty your time, and I know that um, you have quite a bit going on. You have children, uh, a thriving business, uh, to say the least. <laughs> And I just want to say thank you for, for joining me. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm so grateful to be here and um, to have your support. It just encourages me to work more. Also, I'm going to ask you this, Alexandra. When you are um, on the cover of Parenting Magazine, <laughs> or being interviewed on Today's show, and it's 10 years from now, and you have books, and you're doing all these things, and you have a show, possibly, Will you come back and let me interview you and your husband? Absolutely. Even before that. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Hey, I want to thank you. This has been one of the best shows because it talks about my favorite thing, and that is helping children grow relationally, dynamically, and, and having all of those foundations to be successful. So this by far is, again, one of the most important shows for me. Thank you again. Um, you're awesome. Tell your husband I said hello. Look forward to meeting him. And uh, man, this is it. You go out there, have a great day. Um, I'm going to continue to do what I do with this journal for my son and his classmates. And um, we're going to we're going to continue to to make a dent in the universe with your materials. Thank you for believing in your mission. Thank you Thank so you. much. So Our, such a great pleasure. Thank you. Oh, it's been awesome. This has been good. Alexandra, y'all go out and follow this big life journal. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's transformational growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Please share this early and often. Sharon is Karen. Alexandra, you have a great day. Blended Family Playbook. We'll talk to you this Sunday on marriage and blended families. I'll talk to you guys soon. Alexandra, you take care. And uh just continue to be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye now. Bye.